hello and welcome back to Retro Rats. So today we are back at the NEC for the Practical Classics and Restoration Show. We're going to do a quick walkthrough. My voice is going. We were doing a quiz night last night and my voice is gone. So, it should have been mine that goes because I was quiz master. Yeah, that's mine. So we're going to do a quick leg it through. That's video one for you, the run through, and then we'll do our best bits. Mm -hmm. Come, Come join, join us. us. And here we are, the walkthrough. We are. So I'll follow you. You come this way? Yeah, I'll follow you and I'll just say what I know, which is probably not a lot, hey? But petrol head fans, you're here with us today. And we're going to see what we can see. Lovely triumphs. I mean, that's, that's a good, that colour suits it. Wow. Gorgeous. When I was a kid, that was always my favourite, it's Porsche. How are you? Good, thank you. Busy? Yeah. <laughs> well, we had a few um, lovely conversations, we so Paul's. So, do you want to give us some shout outs? So, we've got Adrian, who is we did a the re fellow Retro Rats. Yeah, with his lovely Cortina here. Yes. We'll see that in a bit. We've also got Lyndon. Lyndon from Bury End Classics. Yeah. Uh, he's got two vehicles here. Yeah, we'll spot them in a bit. We will. And there was a gentleman who was on the motor um, on the motor stand as well, who said hello. Um, you did actually, I think it was Scot Scottish something. He was the chap who actually did a shout out and said, "I'll be there. Make sure you say hello." But he actually called us, so he said hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just open. People are pouring in, so we're going to we're try going and way. we're going to try and leg it ahead of the people that's pouring in because we did get in just before it opened, but. I, I couldn't, for the life of me, tell you what that is. A standard motor club, look. Some original standards. Uh, An unrestored standard, same as Richard Bradley's, look. Yeah. That's been sat around for a while, hasn't it? Standard was such a lovely car, but to be honest, I wouldn't restore that. No. I would get that back to road condition and just and, lack, then, and, and just lacquer it. it as it is because that patina is beautiful isn't it what do you think of that patina i do like that i won't rub it because you know they've it hasn't been done yet yeah they've left the dust on there for thing reason. obviously do new tires lights get it running do a service but the body wise i would literally just That's lacquer that a basic eight. that is a proper proper barn find isn't it very nice, I like that. Right, let's follow Peggy. Got the old Hillman Imps over there. Should we have a quick look? Have a look at Gander at the Hillman Imps. <clears throat> so Hillman Imp was made in Scotland. The factory was made in, put in Scotland so that it helped recruitment. And it was partly funded by the government. And the government did it to try and obviously get employment up in Scotland. And um, they made a wonderful car, I, I, you know. Do you like the colour? Yeah. It's modified, there's something going on with that. It is it's modified, but I do like the colour. It's stepped out, hasn't it? It is nice. Engines in the back, which I'll show you now. Bucket seats in there, nice interior. There you go, there's the engine. They're only small, I think they're 650s. I think there's a 650 and a 750. Someone might be telling me there's an 850. I'm not, I've never owned a Hillman Imp, so I couldn't tell you. I just remember from my childhood days that they're noisy and if they're not set up right they don't go uphill. <laughs> this is a sticker you need. It's a good sticker isn't it? Look at that. Go on then show us. Yep, yep, it's cool. No, I'm not going to paint it. Yes, that's a sticker. Yes, very good. That's lovely. That is lovely. I love the, the, love the chrome fins. That's. So that's a Singer version. Is it a Singer? 
The only singer I know is a singer gazelle, but I don't think it's going to be called that. It's a singer badged, but I don't know the name of that. It's very nice, though. Yeah, that is a rare car. There we go, look at that. Hillman. Me and Peggy was offered a Hillman at a show in Oxford that we did about a year ago. Every panel on it was hanging. It literally needed full renovation. The price was a little high end for how bad it was, but he drove it there, so, and it was at a show. But me and Peggy liked the patina on it. Um, if you go back through to the, the sort of Cowley Day shows, you'll probably find it in our videos. This is what the restoration show is all about. Showing you cars in a neglected state. Considering that's an engine, man, right? that's, that's interesting. But it shows how the all mechanicals work. It also shows you where they rot, where the pin problem points are. Peggy's having a good read. Can they get this car, it's got no registration documents, some parts are missing, back on the road, or would it be more useful as spare parts to keep other Super Minx cars running? Yeah, I'd split down the middle. I would say they need to do it. Uh, yeah, it went, the decision would be, if you've already got one or two and you need a spare car, then that's the way forward. But if it's the only one you've got and you can get bits well, for it and they're rare, was involved in an accident and it was purchased by its last owner for restoration yeah. in the early 70s. Oh wow. <laughs> it's it had been a sat bit of work done. Than me. The engine was removed, but then it was left untouched for 50 years. Yeah, I can believe it. But that made it survive till today. Yeah, so that's says, why it's around. They was at, they were worried it wasn't gonna move. Because had they restored it in say 1979 or something then it wouldn't be here today they probably exactly. would have used it and it would have rotted it out again in the early 90s and like most of them in the early 90s they didn't have any particular value back then no. so they all started vanishing between 90 and 2000 when car values dropped right out now car values are creeped right back up because people are using it as as financial assets like yep. banking really yep and i don't think that trend is going to change now Fins are lovely, aren't they? Look at those fins. But yeah, it's um extremely rare car now. Extremely rare car. Don't know why he's got an unhappy face. Very nice. Very cute. And for the time, it would have been a huge car. But nowadays, it's not that big. If you were to park this between two modern cars, say you had two cash cars, either side. Um, this would be a small car in comparison. All right, let's carry on with the walkthrough. We'll come back to it. <clears throat> MG Midgets. This is the Midget and Sprite stand. So this one's a true restoration style. Anyone who knows I had a midget in the garage and we did a video on it. But it got exchanged for other projects, so I don't have it in possession anymore. Um, my uncle has a fully restored one, which is beautiful, beautiful car. Full credit to him, it's, it's a beautiful blue midget. Um, and he enjoys it, he keeps it in the garage, it's looked after, and it'll be preserved for the future. So yeah, it's nice. But we've got 13 in our collection at the minute, so uh, there's quite a lot. To, not 13 midgets, but 13 various different cars. Mini. Is it 13 we got at the minute? Don't 14. Bother. Eh? To be debated. No, we've got 14. Here's Linden's. 
I'll just show Lyndon's and we'll go back over to the Mini. So as you guys know who follow Retro Rats, we do, Retro Rats is a play on word, a road and travel. Um, and if you become a member, you become a rat. So we got a collection of rats. That's what it's all about. This is Lyndon, Barry N Classics. Lyndon proudly did a lot of work for us on um, Gastamoggy Minor and Alcee, Peggy's Mini and had a look at Rovers and stuff and bits and bobs so Lyndon's great and got some future work for Lyndon but this is Lyndon's midget he's got two cars here today we'll find the other one in a bit so good shout out to Lyndon this is uh, it's looking very very good yes right let's go and have a look at that mini because everybody loves a mini we love minis we love minis still got minis in the collection one similar over there <laughs> so we just have a quick go we won't spend too long looking at the uh the cooper works because everybody knows the cooper works it's a mark two isn't it oh yeah i might be a mark three <clears throat> he's been waiting that long to restore his car look how he, he's um I'll get around to it one day, it says on there. <laughs> yes, we're all guilty. That is really unusual. Is that? Yeah. That is an unusual car. I'll get around there in a minute, I'll just wait for the people. There's a beautiful, beautiful clubby estate there. So we've got a clubby estate, we've got Olive. Um, going to be doing work on Olive this year. Ours is a 1976, this is a 1972. Let's go and have a look. Ah, there's one for Harry. There you go, Harry. Harry Smith, who loves uh, Smithy's bits on Instagram, loves his bikes. <laughs> Seats are missing. The original steering wheel. Very nice. Love an estate. And if you get an estate or you've got a chance to own one of these wonderful cars, keep them on the tens. Ours is on the tens with the original hubcaps. Just a lovely look. Oh, that's a lovely car, isn't it? <clears throat> Peggy says, I'm not ever allowed to sell. No, you're not allowed Olive. to sell. Olive is staying with us until the day I die. And I'm glad for that decision. That's a scimitar there. A scimitar GTE. They're, um, they're a fiberglass body and they have huge engines, 2.5 litre I think, so they do a 3 litre version as well. Um, let's have a look under the bonnet. It's going to be set back there. Yeah, so that one's got a 3 litre Essex in it. Uh, 3 litres with Five glass body. I won't swear, but you can imagine how it goes. Automatic transmission as well. That is an absolute beast of a vehicle. Not totally what we're into. As you know, we like the small cars, we like the small engine stuff. So this is more up my street. Despite saying that, I'll show you something now. So I just said to the viewers that um, I love. And you love small cars, we love the smaller the better, the engines. We travel around the country in little vehicles and, mm. and so on. But there's one you won't ever let me have, isn't there? There is. Yeah. But it's so cute. You get nice warm legs when you drive them because the, the engine sits between that foot well up between that panel in the middle and um, you get nice warm legs Hello. All right. lovely motor lovely motor total credit a lovely chat there and I'm hoping we can put that as a feature mm. on a future yay hey <laughs> fellow retro rat we're gonna send some stickers out you have to ignore my voice today as I said earlier in the video um, 
We did a quiz last night. We're part of the Wilson Barks Canal Restoration Trust. And um, I was the quiz master. And Peggy was the quiz master, but I was doing lots of answers with the team. <laughs> My voice is just gone today. It's gone. Uh, I know, and I came, well, I came joint second, joint so second. so I'm not to be sniffed at. I didn't go there to win, but we came joint second. That's probably how most people remember the triumphs. Probably there's a few triumph enthusiasts shouting at me now going, no, but, but they always did look like that. Every triumph in the 70s and 80s looked just like that. That's brilliant. Well, so we'll get there in a minute. It's Allegro. And some people are going to say they all, the Allegro is always waiting like that, which so is not not true, is it? We all love an Allegro. Brown Vela. Comes with a clock. You get a clock while you're waiting for recovery. <gasps> Did I say that? Sorry. I do. I am a fan. I do like them. I would own one. How you doing? All right. I do like them. I am a fan. He's been waiting a long time too. Yes. Yes, he's been waiting a long time. I, um, if the opportunity arose, I would own one. I'd put one in the collection. Whether Peggy would let me have one in the collection, I don't know. But, yeah, that was like, it's but, in Austin. Oh, so Peggy says, I've got semi-approved, look. I'm not a big over fan of the Triumph sports cars, but I've never driven one. So if you've got one and you want to prove me wrong, you say, come on, Clay, what are you missing? Then, by all means, we'll just walk down this bit. we're just going to walk around this bit. It's nice to actually see some so many retro raptors. Yes, yes. And there's, thank you for all coming and saying hello. So, like I said, this is. Well, I was going to do a quick run through, but it's not a run through now. So, we're just going to do finish off this walk through, and then we'll do the best bits, and we'll come around and see all the people. That's unusual, isn't it? Plastic bike. I bet that doesn't weigh much. I'll come back and have a look at that in a bit. What I like about this show compared to some of the other shows that you get is this is a practical classics and restoration show. Yes. So you get people working on that, on parts and cars. And it Thank just works. You. It's really nice to see that people are getting their hands dirty. Yeah and sharing knowledge and experience yeah. and stories and and that's what brings people together mm. the cars bring the stories it's starting to sound like uh, an advert for a certain auction firm up north now in <laughs> yorkshire uh but um no the stories of, of how they have lived they have done adventures so there's a uh, police car there we look at all these know what travels they've been on what journeys they've been well on. when i was a kid we used to go to a place called Haynes of Cello and it was probably five acres of abandoned cars where they, left, they were left in a, in a field for months on end and people would go there with their toolboxes and strip parts out. And that's what everyone did back in the, in the 80s and the 90s. You always find cars in streets with multicoloured body panels and so on. And, um, and I, as a kid, used to traipse around it and look in the boots and the glove boxes and take in the smells of the cars and and wonder what the stories were and the journeys that they'd been on and so on and um and i miss that now because scrapyards like that are far and few between now because modern scrapyards modern cars don't do it for us see i don't mind seeing cars where they've been completely restored redone like this Mm. But I prefer seeing them in that state. Well, that's why we're never going to respray gas. <laughs> because we like gas's originality, the patina that she's got. Though I did try to polish her last summer and that didn't go too well. But I think it was because it was in the middle of a heat wave. <laughs> and the amount of dust that was on, on the site of the show. That's, um, yeah, it gives you a good perspective of how they're built, how they're repaired. And the simplicity of them. Modern cars are all laptops and computers and people scratching heads. There's, there's nothing to scratch your head about this. It either works or it doesn't. It's all mechanical. Needs an original steering wheel, but hey, they only just put that on to move it, so that's all right. I believe we've seen this one before. Is that a Morris? That's the Morris van. 1955. Okay, we'll come back to it in a minute. Let's carry on the walk through. 
there's that camper that was the one they, they tried to sell us last time yes. <laughs> I've got enough camper vans <laughs> it's lovely though it is lovely British Motor Corporation a rare survivor there isn't many of them left at all at all that is a very rare beast Riley Club these are getting rare now Vauxhall Calibre I know there's a standing joke with people who know me personally about Vauxhalls but um, you've got to give the Calibre credit it was an iconic car and um, it, is, it is it is a thing of beauty but um, no would I want to own one? afraid not <clears throat> didn't they call that the Belmont or was Belmont an addition? the estate car oh that's a gem there's an absolute gem that's a Bedford Midi long wheelbase that's one of the last ones I read Bedford Midi long wheelbase mm -hmm. with a high top that is a gem that's, they're column change they are 2 litre 2.4 litre column change side sliding doors it's, it's the big brother of the Bedford Rascal van beautiful absolutely loved it we had a Bedford van had a Bedford midi van for about a year back in the late 90s loved it um, the only reason why we didn't keep it my son at the time was about two years old and it was it wasn't really practical because when you put seats in the back of a van and you got a two-year-old they tried to get out <laughs> so we went back to a, a metro at the time and then then ironically after after the metro died I didn't know the mechanics that I know now and the bodywork. That's the car we bought. The Citroen Saxo. Ours was an Irish. I wonder what this one is. It looks earlier because it's got black bumpers. That's an N, so it's slightly earlier than ours. Yeah, we had an RH, we had one, we had that car. We had that car for three years. Rare now, you never see a Saxo on the road now. It's funny how cars disappear, isn't it? If you want to write in the comments below and guess, Peggy, should we ask you? Don't give the answer away to see your face. So people, their challenge is to write in the comments below how many cars they think I've owned between 1995 and 2023. Yeah, good luck with that one. Do you want to give a clue? Three figures? Three figures. Three figures. So there is not many cars I haven't owned, um, all through different durations, all through different reasons. Um, but it's given us a good worldly experience as to, to what things are about. That's a Skoda, oh, I was gonna say that's a Skoda Favre, but is it a Skoda Favre? The drive electric Almo, it's been converted, hasn't it? That's, that's been modified. It was a Skoda Favre. Not anymore. Give it or take it. I think electric has a future, but I don't think it's the answer. I think, I think dual fuel. A vehicle should have the ability to go locally under 30 miles an hour electric and maybe use fuel on a motorway, but who knows? <clears throat> change of government, change of policy might do it. Right, so there's two over here that's very interesting. Sorry about the music. Skoda Favre Estate. Very rare beast now. And a Skoda Rapid. Very nice. Right, because of the music in the background, I might have to stop the tour and carry on in a moment. So there's a nice little Fiat 126 there. Test drove one of them, went to buy it a few years ago, which I had now, but I didn't buy it at the time. The exhaust was blowing. I took it around Bristol streets, up and down hills, and had a tremendous headache afterwards, and the chap was most disappointed I didn't buy it. Probably the smallest car. It was in competition with the Mini at the time. And um, to be honest, it's almost smaller than the Mini, but um, I've never put one of those side by side with a Mini, but beautiful to see it. If one come up now, definitely. That is one hell of an index. 
I mean, I've seen some wonderful metalwork that might come out, but gosh, that's some indent. Seen the indent on this roof. <laughs> Want a water catcher, water feature in the garden? No. <laughs> I hear it's Cinquecento. Is that how you say it? Cinquecento, Cinquecento. And um, so we're just going to go up here and then. That's the bay, that's the, the little later one. The bigger one was called the Uno. <clears throat> ADO 16 was the model number. It's a princess version. Multiple, multiple badges and marks and so on. Generally, it was only the dashes and the grills that were different. The, um, the car, in essence, was the same car. That one's got the huge 60s style grill. Um, but they're all made under the ADO 16 title. Peugeot 306 Cabriolet. Volvo, is that a 740? Nice little Rover 25 there. And then we've got the Rover 800 stand beyond that. So I'm gonna go now. We're gonna wrap up the, um, we're gonna wrap up this, this walk through and we're gonna save all the best for the best bits feature. So stay safe. Stay retro people. See ya, see you soon.